What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Afro Joe here, tell you like a T.I. is. Yes, I guess y'all heard about the great legend Joan Rivers passing away from throat surgery because her voice was rasping up and people, to me, I thought it was kind of sad as hell. It's like, didn't we just lose Robin Williams a few weeks ago? Y'all remember a few weeks ago we lost the great Robin Williams by suicide I remember that now it was sad that we lost Robin Williams and Jones Rivers in the same year you weren't even out, out. <clears throat> you weren't even out and we lost both of them and I was kind of heartbroken when we lost Robin Williams and Joan Rivers back when I was little I was never a big fan <laughs> of Joan Rivers because I hated when she used to do the red carpets. When I was young, I used to have with her do the red carpets with her daughter. But when I got older, and she started doing these appearances on these talk shows or whatever, and got to talking, and she, when she started telling these jokes, I loved it. I was like, this bitch got brass. I said this. To me, I thought John Rose was the baddest bitch. This bitch said goes so high that damn it the hell other comedians cannot reach it. Now he talked about her man so gracefully she say this bitch broke so many boundaries that even in death the bitch is still breaking them. That's how I see, that's how I see it. Joan Rivers might be dead and gone but the woman is still breaking boundaries like it ain't nothing. Even in death this woman know how to break some boundaries. How the hell do you do that after death? How do you do that after death, Mr. John Rivers? And I was kind of heartbroken to find out she passed away. And one thing that threw me off, and I think her her daughter, Melissa, it was upset about it. Because I, you know, when I heard that she passed away, I said, okay. It's like a few days ago, she went in to, to, for voice, to have surgery on her voice. Because they couldn't figure out why was her voice getting so raspy getting raspy and all like this and that so I was like okay she's going to get that checked out doctor said she had to have surgery on her voice and I was like okay she got to get a tune up I ain't got nothing to worry about it's a procedure and uh then they say she went into cardiac arrest I said hold up hold up cardiac arrest I said y'all just trying to see what's wrong with the voice trying to see what's really popping off, what's really making her voice so raspy. I said, well, she's getting up there in age. She's 81. She's getting up there in age. She's a comedian. She's always traveling. She does her fashion police, which I love watching the episode. Certain, I don't watch it all the time, but I catch some of the episodes. The only reason why is because I want to hear what Joan got to say. The bitch is funny as fuck. And the woman spoke what's on her mind. You never see some comedian females do that like she did the woman spoke her mind she really put it out there da 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 and I say like, oh this bitch is funny as a motherfucker and I remember when I, I watched when she had this show Joan and Melissa Knows Best there was an episode that really got me man he's like wow Afro Joe you really touched by what happened in Joan's life is if y'all remember back in the day Joan Rivers and Johnny Carson was very close she was like the number one guest to stay on his show Joan Rivers that was so buddy buddy and when she went to start her own show on Fox now Fox can't compete with ABC, CBS and NBC they, Fox can't like like you got these big networks you look at NBC, ABC, and CBS you see these big older siblings and you look at Fox like this baby brother this baby brother now you gotta look at it like this she went to Fox to do her own show I would have thought Johnny Carson would have been happy no when she called and told him Johnny I got the show he hung up in her face and haven't talked to her in 30 years and when he passed away, it hurt her. It, she was already hurt because he quit talking to him, being friends with her. 
But when he passed away, it hurt her even more. It was bad enough when her talk show got canceled. Her husband committed suicide, leaving her and her daughter all alone. That was already hurtful enough. But for Johnny Carson to stop talking to her, even though she that happened, but she did her best. She still went out there like a trooper and did her damn thing. And one thing about it is, I love it when every time I turn on Inside Edition, this woman's got something to do, got something to say, ain't holding back, ain't. She, her mouth was like a big gun. And her jokes was like the ammunition. When she shot that damn mouth off, man, that shit was funny. It was funny, but it was true. That's all it was. It was funny, but it was true, and I laughed my ass off of it. And that's how it is. And one thing about it is, like I said, I, I watched one episode of Melissa Joan. Joan and Melissa know his best. There was a memorial did for Johnny Carson. She walked up to it. Because she was banned from Johnny Carson's show, the late night show, which was given to Jay Leno. Then Jay Leno gave the show to Jimmy Fallon. She walked up to the memorial for Johnny Carson. She sat down. It was kind of touching, kind of struck a nerve in my heart, man. I felt kind of bad. It's like friendship gone. And she sat there and she looked at Johnny's picture on that plaque. She said, Why did you stop talking to me? Why? You could see the hurt in her face, even though all that Botox and micro face lips, you can still see that hurt in her face. And you can hear it in her voice that she was hurt by John. Even when he passed, he she still wanted she's like, Why'd you do this, Johnny? Why'd you quit talking to me for so many years? And I was so hurt, man, I was like, That's your buddy, man. He turned his back on you. I said, like, Man, that man did her so wrong. If I would have been in his shoe and I found out my good friends got a show, I would have supported the hell out of her. And when Jimmy finally took over, she was finally unbanging, came up uh, on Jimmy finally show, gave him a hug, and said, I'm back. And this woman did everything, wrote books, talked about everything and all this and that. I was like, that's how you do it. I said, you cannot find comedy gold like like her no more you can't find it in her and Robin Williams like Robin Williams and Joan Rivers are like comedy gold man you just cannot replace you just cannot replace that shit and it's true what Paul Moody said now Paul Moody was on Dave Chappelle and wrote for Living Color he created the character uh, Home and the Clown he's like he talked about Richard Pryor. He says, "You're not born like he. The way he kind of put, it, I'm trying to sum this up right. He said, you 'You're not born funny. You're made funny.' Which he's trying to make, say was, you're not born to be a great comedian. You're made to be a great comedian. You look at Robin Williams and, and Joan Rivers. These people was made into comedy gold." By the things that happened in their life. When Robin Williams passed a few weeks ago. When Robin Williams passed a few weeks ago. Joan Rivers had nothing to say. But kind things about Robin Williams. This woman. The, the woman that threw insults like it ain't nothing. Has some kind to say. This woman had so many battle scars in her lifetime man. You can't say this woman wasn't hurt too. And uh, when I, like I said, when I found out when she passed away, passed away from the throat surgery and all this and that, and it kind of threw me off. I said, she's going in for throat surgery. Throat surgery. And I couldn't figure out for the damnedest what the hell happened. I couldn't figure out for the damnedest. And I sat there and I looked and I was like, what did they do to this woman? What happened to her? This woman was going in for throat surgery for the problem she had. And she dies 
on the damn she did what happened was they said was she went in for throat she wanted to get a checkup about why is her voice is so raspy and they couldn't figure out for the damnedest so what happened was she uh So they so they scheduled for uh, throat surgery, for voice surgery. I was like, fine, cool. Then she went in a cardiac arrest. I was like, okay, cardiac. I said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What happened? What happened? Who did? What? What? What the? What the hell am I missing about this? Cardiac arrest. I was like, and then they put her in a coma. I said, hold up, cardiac arrest, coma, something ain't sitting right, people. I'm more confused than the mother, than the next person in line. I couldn't figure out what, what, what the hell happened to Joan. Her voice is like something happened in that room, and I'm glad that Melissa, Melissa Rivers, had enough galls like her mother, galls like her mother, and to go figure out what the hell happened. Now they doing a what was it, what is it, an investigation? I said, people, come on, what killed this woman? What took this woman away from us? I know, like I said about Robin Williams, I said, every comedian has issues in their lives, but people don't know. But one thing about it is, man, the world can be a little bit gray. But people like Joan Rivers or Robin Williams, Joan Rivers or Robin Williams, can brighten our day up just enough to live to, to see another day, just to live, just to see what snacks they're gonna bring us. And for one, I feel bad for both of them because their lives, like I said, man. Because people don't realize behind closed doors, man. It's like comedians; they live by two masks: the drama, the the drama, aka tragedy, the tragedy mask. And the comedy mask. And one thing about it is, on stage they wear the comedy mask, but on stage they wear the tragedy mask. And she had some tragedy things in her life that you never seen this woman stop. Neither did Robin Williams. But one thing about them two, these two, they did it for so long. They appeared on Johnny Carson. They were so successful. They did everything for us. They made us laugh. They made us cry. They made us think. And this woman set so many goals that we this Joan Rivers set so many goals for so many female comedians that they sit there and they took even men that tell Joe even even Tim Allen said he learned a lesson from her. And you got Sarah, Sarah Silverman, Roseanne, and so on and so forth saying, I learned a lot from Joan Rivers. And my heart goes out to her daughter. My heart goes out goes out to her daughter. And I'm kind of sad that she had to go out like that. I wish she didn't have to pass away. But something ain't right for her to, for this to happen to her. Something ain't right. And this bitch talked about everybody under the moon. Under the moon. She was 81 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Afro Joe 10 like TA is. Follow me on Twitter at Afro Joe Work. Follow me on Tumblr. Subscribe to my channels, CeeLo Jr. 2, CeeLo Jr. 3. Tell me what you think. And tell me how Joan Rivers changed your life. And did you think she was ever funny? Peace, love, and Afro Breeze.